The reason why you put the tannin before the mordant is the tannin helps the mordant to hold on to the fiber better, especially for cellulose fiber. It will initially help with any natural dye for color fastness in washing and it won't be affected by light as fast as if you have fiber that hasn't been treated with tannin before mordanting. I just started experimenting with black rice dye and I love the outcome. And one of my subscribers asked me, so what do you expect with color fastness with this? I'm like, hmm, do I care? And then I realized, yeah, I actually do care. <laughs> so I researched and I learned some exciting things. Well, first of all, the black rice dye is pretty color fast. It's not a bad dye. But you can improve color fastness of natural dyes, especially on cellulose fiber, but also on protein fibers. Protein fibers coming from animal and cellulose fibers coming from plants like cotton or nettle or any plant fiber. You first scour them, which I do right here. I scour some silk, merino, and mohair. Got more white stuff to dye with. With a little bottle of scour power. And here it says you need one teaspoon per five liters. And I just have that hot, not cooking and leave it on for an hour. What I used to do till now is I put my scoured fiber into an alum and cream of tartar mordant bath, with the alum being 10% of the weight of fiber and the cream of tartar 8% of the weight of fiber. But now it comes. What I learned is that you, before you move your fiber into a mordant bath, you Give it a tannin soak. You can use any tannin available for you. It doesn't matter where it comes from. There are several plants that are tannin rich. One is the walnut, the bark, the leaves or the husks. But walnut also dyes, makes a brown dye. You might not want the brown to be in your fiber before you dye with something brighter like yellow. Pomegranate, the fruit and the skins, the gall, the gall apples from the wasps. You can also use the gall apples to alter your dye at the end, but I'm talking about making things color fast now. So what I've learned is that also the pits of avocados are very high in tannin and you can cook them for an hour and then put your fiber in and let it sit there overnight or soak it at least an hour and then put the fiber into the mordant bath. I think that's very interesting. The funny thing is I have been collecting avocado peels for a while now because I want to do an avocado dye eventually and I just kept the pits too. I thought oh I'm sure they're good for something. So I have all those avocado pits washed and in the freezer so they won't mold. And I took three out for making a bath for my fiber that's scouring here. I cut those apart and we'll put them in the pot. So the interesting thing is when you cut them apart they're white but after a while they get orangey. And I think the orange thing is the tannin. Also the usnea lichen is high in tannin. The cooking water in here. Actually, I think you're not supposed to completely cook it, just simmer it. So I will keep it on a simmer. Some say you have to cook it, some say you have to simmer it. I will simmer it because I think if you cook it, it will get brown. And when you simmer it, it's more a pinkish tone, which probably allows for more over dyeing afterwards. Because it is a little bit of a dye. But if your dye is stronger than the tannin bath, who cares? 
The avocado pits have been simmering in here for over an hour and it looks beautiful. Let me show you. It looks like a dye bath. I'm actually tempted to use it also to put some scoured and mortared and silk in here to see how it looks if you dye with avocado pits. But I have to put my scoured fiber into the solution here. These are my rinsed silk hankies. This is the mohair and this is the merino and this is the scour water. Now you can see the color is so pretty. The avocado pits I actually put back in a plastic bag and put it in the freezer because you're supposed to be able to use them a few times. I will try. I mean, if the liquid gets nice and dark like this time, I might just as well use it twice or three times or add some fresh avocado pits together with those till all the tannin is exhausted. Then I put my scoured merino in here and my scoured mohair and my scoured silk hankies. Now this can soak and cool down for an hour or overnight. For the mordant you can add 10 to 20 percent of alum, 4 to 7 percent of cream of tartar and then dilute that in hot water. The fiber has been soaking in here for over an hour now and it looks like lovely pink. Especially my daughter would love this. It's almost like that, but it's not a dye, it's a soak. So I will transfer it into the mordant bath now. I mean, if this would be dry, it's, it's a very light pink. You would barely see it. See, it's very light. It's basically an off-white with a pinkish tone. So you can dye anything on top of that without having the color shift too much. Now I let all this fiber cool down and soak in this box for about a day minimum and then it's ready to dye with any natural dye and it's supposed to be more color fast to light and washes and take natural dye wonderfully. I haven't tested it yet that's what I learned, but I will do a color fastness test once I spun up some of my different fiber that I mordant it differently with and without tannin soak. And then I will show you the results. So stick around for that. I also had an idea. I have this fall dress. I like it a lot. I bought it in a second-hand store and I thought, oh, I'm gonna get used to the pink, you know, just do some pink for the change. But it turns out I'm not wearing it much because of the pink, unless I'm in a real pink mood. But I like how it sits me, it's nice, and I don't want to give it away. So it's made out of 82% cotton and 18% polyester, and then it has that fall leather stripe here that's a little shiny so i thought i could scour this put it in the tannin bath put it in the mordant bath and then dye over with it with some plants i think it would be nice if it would you know be another shade of brown here is like a brownish the black obviously it's not going to change much it's just going to be dark maybe with a little bit of a shine of another color um like some brown grayish tone if it's gray probably would turn out like some muted purple which would be fine with me or i could dye it over with a orange or a red which would probably be interesting too what do you think what plant would you dye this with? Maybe like gall apple, I don't know, a green maybe, matcha, <laughs> or 
or walnuts. Walnuts, I think, gives nice brown. Let me know in the comments what you would use to dye this over so it's not as flashy looking. Also, it's not gonna dye perfectly because it's 18% polyester, I guess. But it's fine. It's an experiment. If it looks terrible at the end, I didn't really lose much. I will consider and value all your inputs on what plant I should use to over dye this. And then probably we'll make a short fun video about it. If you have experience with that, let me know if it worked for you. If you like this video, you might want to watch another dyeing video. Thank you so much for watching and I see you soon.